I think the good thing about this band is we are we're able to mix really bluesy rock and roll stuff with like beautiful melodies, you know. It's very rough and very soft, sweet um, at the same time. I went to school in a, in a place called Valby, Valby, um, from the first grade. And then Tim came, he moved here from um, up north um, and came into my school in the same class. And suddenly we just started playing from the start. Um, I have never played anything before, so he taught me how to play the bass. Our first rehearsing room was in a youth club, you know, because the rent was cheap, didn't have to pay that much, you know. So, me and Martin went to school together and, and met Soren through a friend. And one day he came, came to me and said, he knew two guys who wanted to play with me, so I thought, okay, that could be funny because I never played in the band before. So, one day we tried at my school and we didn't say a word to each other. Just looked at each other, said hello. Then we went to the, the classroom and we played. And when we get, got tired, you know, we just put our instruments back and then said, should we form a band? Yes. And we'll just go on from there. We met him and just started playing out for fun without no um, vocals on. Played sort of heavy rock. So who decided that it was time to do vocals? Um, of course, we needed a vocalist, but um, we had one in the, in the beginning, but he was so bad, uh, we couldn't hear what he sang. <laughs> so suddenly, Tim just started um, to sing. Uh, he had to show the singer what to do, and it sounded great, so... Guys, after the Danish um, Mesterskop, see how cool English, uh, a competition, yeah. a music competition, what happened? We won. <laughs> no, 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 no. I want the whole story. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, we didn't was... win the first time. So tell me what? again, you didn't win the first time according to your biography. No, we didn't. Um, we were joining this uh, contest with uh, about 200 bands, I think. And uh, we made it to the semi finale and um, we lost at the first time. Ouch. And we thought, okay, we wanted to try it next year. So we tried again, and we lost. Again. <laughs> and then we thought, um, actually, the other guys didn't want to, to join the contest, but I said, we have to. I know this time it's going to be. So we joined the contest again for the third time, and we won. <laughs> That's great. Was that because the judges didn't want to see you again the fourth year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, I, I started playing guitar and, 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 and sing when I was about seven years old or something. And I, find, and I found it really boring, you know, to play other people's stuff, you know. I wanted to do my own from the beginning, you know. So I've been writing songs since I was seven or eight years old, you know. Of course, in the beginning, it was just, you know, blah, blah, whatever, in Danish as well. And. I don't know, I, I think it's a gift from someone upstairs or maybe, you know, to be, to be able to, to write songs or to find the thing you are good at at, at such an early age, you know. What comes first, the text or the music? The music. Yeah? Yes. I think it's about 80% music. Isn't it really hard? I've asked this before, but I'm really curious. Isn't it hard to think of an original melody? Well... Um, you have to ask Tim. I don't write that, that well when I just take a guitar and say, now I want to write a song. Nothing will come out, you know. I think most of the time it just, oops, there it was. And then I pick up my guitar you know, and start working it, taking it from there and take it to a chorus or whatever I'm into, you know. It's kind of rare that I write a complete song, you know, in just one take, you know. It always comes, you know, from this side and this side and then Do you any music yourself or any lyrics? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, but it's very difficult. Also because Tim uh, started uh, writing his songs when he was about seven years old. So I just started, so I think it's, it's very difficult to find a good lyric and also to put the lyric and the music together. It's a very difficult thing. Do you understand Tim's lyrics? Not all of them, no. Pretty meaningless, some of them. 
but um, it sounds great. <laughs> I think on the on the first album, every song was you know like pure gibberish, you know, like nonsense. Or if you want to take it in a more serious way, like they were very psychedelic. But it doesn't have to have a meaning. It just if it sounds great, it's okay. You don't have this big kind of. Bob Dylan message in our music is just, this is rock and roll. And you didn't have to like fight your way to the top, did you? No, we were actually very lucky because we won this competition in Denmark. So we got um, we got the chance to promote uh, ourselves with a, with a CD single. So it's very lucky and we got a hit almost instantly. So um, we haven't thought, uh, thought we our way out. competition at school. Um, when we, where we would, you know, mention a, a letter from the alphabet, and we will, you know, come up with all the bands we, we knew who started with that letter, you know, and uh, we got around to D at the time, and we've been through all the bands we knew, you know, like Deep Purple and Death Leopard and everything, and suddenly I just, as a joke, you know, mentioned Dismiss Lizzie as a band, and he didn't know that band, you know, <laughs> so and we started the band as well at the same time, so we thought it was kind of a, a funny name. So you're a young musician, and a record label comes to you and wants to sign you on. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course, we had, a, we, had um, we had some different offers, also from some uh, German um, firms, but um, we, took, we picked the one in Denmark because we knew this we didn't want to go to Germany and, you know, every weekend to um, keep up what they were doing with, with the songs or anything. We just wanted to be in Denmark, to have a base here. So, um, of course, it was scary in, in the beginning, but um, we found out what it was about. How come you're so big in Asia? I think it's the same about the melody. I think the melody unites all different kinds of people. Because it's really, really strange that such a foreign country as Japan, you know, from Denmark, it's it's really weird that they turn on about the music. They get turned on because, but I think it's just, in, in Japan, there's a bit, very big market for, you know, hard rock stuff, you know, like guy like Bernie Melmstein is like bigger than Elvis over there, you know, and it's very, they're very much into hard rock and like heavy pop. <laughs> How did you get it? How did you start playing this? Um, I started out playing guitar and fat and drums. I started playing drums much earlier because I just wanted to play anything. So, um, but I was not so good. <laughs> so I started playing the bass um, with Tim. So I just played bass ever since. Now, when you're the drummer, you're the guy in the back. Yes. Does it ever piss you off? Yes. Yes. Sometimes I hate, really hate to to be in the back when you're playing at, at big stages. I'm always sitting be almost behind the curtains. What's the first thing you learned to play on the bass? Uh -huh. Smoke on the water? Yeah, smoke on the water, I think. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting to, uh, to move the set a bit out to the front of the stage because I hate to sit all in the back, but sometimes we can't do it because of, of the light. I have to sit there, they say, and say, no, I want to go up there. Nope, you have to sit in the back. anxiety before you go on stage? Sometimes. What happens? What do you do? Shake. <laughs> go to the <laughs> toilet a lot. <laughs> Tell me what it's like to perform live. <clears throat> to perform live is the thing we're about. It's um, becoming an addiction almost. It's, um, that's the number one about being in this business, to perform live, I think. What's the kick in it? Everything, the crowd, the music, the, the volume, you know, it's everything. Are you yourself when you're on stage? Nope. you're not yourself. You have to, you can't go on stage and just be yourself. It would be very boring, I think. It's, um, you have to have an act. You don't think of an act, but you, you do it anyway. So you're not like take that, you don't get up and like choreograph your moves? No, I don't. I, don't want to, I do whatever I want to do on stage. It just comes in the actual moment. Is it fun to be a rock star? Yes. Are yeah. you a rock star? Well, no, I'm just a musician who's been lucky to earn money uh, on the music we make. And that's lucky, and that's great. Thank you, and good night. I don't like calling me a rock and roll star because I'm not, you know, I'm just a rock and roll musician with success at the moment, you know. But I don't really remember how, when I was younger, 
how I looked at, you know, like what it's like to be a famous musician or whatever. So I don't really remember. I just go along with whatever happens, you know, and, and enjoy the good thing, things and, and try to make the bad things better. What's different about Rotator from your first album? Um, I think it's more rough and it's more compact. Um, the first album was much, uh, the songs were uh, sticking out. On the, the second album here is it's more compact, it's more package, and um, I think it's more live into it because we've been playing about 200 jobs. So we got that uh, live feeling into it when we go and record the album. And it's more rough. I think on this album there's a lot more interesting lyrics because it relates to some of the situations we experienced with the band, you know, because on the first album it got very successful, you know, and we were on the road and a lot of things happened, you know. And got to know a little bit more of what life oh, really part of the trend going on. But I think when we started the band, we thought that a real rock star should look like, you know, long hair and, and I don't know, little, little stuff, little jackets, whatever. So when did you figure out that the image didn't matter, but the music did? Mm, I think the image matter a lot. Yeah. But I never took that as, as the, the, the important thing because music always comes first, you know. And then afterwards, I, I don't sit down and think about, I play this kind of music, what, what clothes do I have to wear if I play this kind of music? I just, you know, I'm a, a special type of human being and, and this is the clothes I like to wear. Of course, you get influenced by Maybe the, the music you listen to, I listen, listen a lot to 60s music like old garage rock and also the Beatles and Stones and, and stuff like that. And of course I look at them, how do they look? Because I think that's kind of a cool image. Um, I, I noticed that you're like the trendiest guy in the band about clothes. Okay. Yeah, clothes. Okay. What is this I think it's very clothes? casual, this kind of clothes. Yeah, okay, camera, you can't see his, like, silver jacket, which is over there. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your silver jacket. Where'd you get that? It matches my, my bass, in fact. It's also silver. It's an old Rickenbacker bass. On the jacket who matches the bass. We don't have to put any clothes on. We don't want to. And actually, it's, it's, it's about to being ourselves and just play the music we like to play. And we've been lucky to, to be popular on the music we make. You came here and I noticed your necklace, which is kind of similar to the front of your um, new album. And then you stood up and you showed me your belt. Yes. Is there some way we can like get his belt? Can we get him to stand up and you can see his belt? Because it's like, it's what's on the cover of this. Stand up. Here okay. it is. No, stand there. Hold it up. All right. Do we get that? Okay. The original. <laughs> How come your belt is like on the cover of your new album? I don't know. I found the belt a couple of years ago and I thought it was a kind of a nice belt. And uh, I just like the image of it. And, you know, the album was called Rotator, so we need something, you know, round. Or got turned on to music was through my father's record collection and uh, the Beatles album dominated that record collection. He was always playing Beatles stuff when I was a little kid, you know, and it just, just turned me on right from when I was two or three years old, you know. I'd always been to the Paul McCartney side of the Beatles. You always have to choose if you are a Lennon or a McCartney guy, you know. And it's always been McCartney. It's just, I think, a couple of years ago that I turned around because I think John Lennon is a lot more, I don't know, serious. What do you see yourself doing in 10 years? Playing music, um, maybe in another band, I, maybe in Dizzy Miss Lizzy, I don't know. Hopefully, 
we will be a success. How do you get along with the guys? Great. Are you more than just a band? I would say so. It's like a marriage. Um, <laughs> well, of course, we are the best friends. It's not such a good thing that things went so well and we got so successful at, at such a young young age because then you if I'm maybe 28 or 28 or 29 at that point you know I'm standing there without an education I don't know what, what I have to do you know no money because I spent them all you know <laughs> do you ever worry about that yes a little bit I would say because but again I, I believe still I believe in myself because if if the band doesn't work out you know I, I'm still able to write songs, you know. Maybe I can... Tim, come here. I can write songs. It does work out. It has worked oh, yes, out. Yes, it yes. will work out. <laughs>